Mini split not heating. Let me show you what the pressure should be. Turn the unit on heat. Indoor fan does not blow until the indoor coil reaches 99 degrees for a temperature. Let's go check the outdoor unit. Outdoor unit is running. We got our low side hose hooked up to the vapor connection. We got our temperature clamp to measure the temperature of the vapor line. Temperature is 110, that's pretty good. The low side pressure is 236. In my opinion, I think that pressure needs to be a lot higher. And this is not the pressure of the low side because during the heating operation, the indoor heat exchanger becomes the condenser. So we're measuring the high pressure side of the system because in the heating operation, this is no longer the condenser. It's only the condenser in the cooling operation. It's now the evaporator. So 237, so this is staying about the same. We should have enough refrigerant to heat up that coil and our indoor fan should start blowing. Let's go check the temperature. Well, I've got my little induct psychrometer, but the indoor fan is still not running. So it hasn't reached temperature yet. I didn't see any oil on the flare connections, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my leak detector and check the indoor coil. Measuring the supply temperature now with the dual induct psychrometer, 68 degrees. That is not warm air. It's definitely not charged. It's definitely low on refrigerant and there is a leak. Checking this coil, see if I pick up any, maybe oil that's in the pan. We shall see. I just got a, I picked up something over here on this side of the coil. Hmm. Yeah, I keep getting readings up here and I think it's the indoor coil. When you're using a refrigerant leak detector like this, never take the sensor tip and hold it in the airstream. Watch what happens if you do it's automatically gonna alarm. And you're gonna think there's a leak, but there's not. You're just not using it properly. No visible oil. Definitely need to get some nitrogen, do a nitrogen leak test. These connections have been welded, so there's no longer a flare connection up there. These are the only flare connections, and I'm not getting any beeps. So, hmm. I'm gonna turn it in cooling and add some refrigerant. Fan speed to high. There we go. Beautiful. The scale set up zeroed out. This unit holds 40 ounces, so a little over two pounds of refrigerant. It's a one and a half ton unit. And look at that vapor pressure, 50. That is not good. So we need to definitely add some refrigerant. That vapor pressure should be at least 100 right now. All right, let's see. 62, it's still no bueno. Not good at all, not good. All right. Add a little bit, see what happens to our pressure. Added a pound of refrigerant so far. Vapor line pressure is 127. Vapor line temperature is 45, that's more like it. Now I'm gonna turn the system back into the heating operation and show you what the pressures should look like now that we are no longer low of charge. So, look at that, that's nice. Should be blowing some nice cool air inside. All right. Back in the heating operation. All right. See what happens. Back in the heating operation, vapor pressure is a lot higher, 260. Vapor temperature is a lot higher, 129. So now it's getting better. You can see what low charge will do. 
Now let's go check and see what our indoor supply temperature is. Ooh, nice and warm. Still doesn't feel very warm. But what's the temperature? 79, still going up. So 79 degrees, that's a lot better. Looks like whoever's been working on this left me a message. Interesting. I'm gonna find out what's been done to this unit. New outdoor unit. Did a loop with the line sets because it's gonna be less than 10 foot. Secured everything. Looks good. I took the mini split out. I've got it on the table here in the shop and I'm going to pressure test and find this leak. If you don't know what spin flaring tool is, you need to check out their products. This is a quarter inch and then half inch. I put a couple new flares on the vapor and liquid line and I'm going to connect this short piece of line set from the indoor air handler to the outdoor unit right here. And then I'm going to use my gauges and put some nitrogen on this. Let's find this leak. If you don't know how to make a flare, I will drop a video in the link in the description of how to flare with a flaring tool. If you want to check out that spin flaring tool, I'll drop a link for that product so you can get it. I'm pumping this with some nitrogen. Also, if you don't know how to braise, I've got a video on brazing. Go check that out. I'll put that in the link in the description as well. I'm going to put about 500 pounds on this. We're going to find out where this is leaking. Increase the pressure. All right, we're almost there. The gauge is... All right. Stop it there. Pressure's at 466. Let's see if we got a leak. See where it's at. Wait about 15 minutes and it's definitely leaking. It was at 466 and now it's dropped to 447. So it's dropped almost 20 PSI in 15 minutes. It's a very slow leak, but we're going to find it. So I'm going to go ahead and put some more nitrogen in and get it over 500. And then I'm going to take this uh, apart and hopefully it's in the indoor coil. Now I'm going to come in here and douse the ends of this coil and douse the middle part and the sides. And then I'm going to wait a few seconds and see if we can find the leak. We're on 512 PSI right now. Let's see what happens. Do you see what I see? A leaky leak in the middle of the coil. Now, what am I going to do? Let me show you. Look at that. A leak right in the middle. Found the leak. Yes. I got a brand new coil under warranty. So I am going to replace it and get it fixed. Excited. And there was our leak. Look at that. Okay. Pretty easy to do this. So that's what I'm going to do. Usually when I pressure test a mini split system, I usually find that the indoor coil is the problem area. Why is it the indoor coil and not the outdoor coil? If I were on the coast next to the ocean in Florida, it might be my outdoor coil, but I'm here in Tennessee and it's my indoor coil because of poor indoor air quality or something known as VOCs, volatile organic compounds. And how are they produced? It's from off-gassing. VOCs are emitted from things like wood preservatives and aerosol sprays that we use in our home. And this off-gassing, we have a fan that pulls air through that coil. And as the air passes through the coil, those VOCs are damaging that coil. So that's the reason I find that the indoor coils are the leaking areas and not the outdoor coils here in Tennessee. Let me know what you find for your problem areas where you're at. If it's the outdoor coil, if it's the indoor coil, let me know what you're finding in the field as a technician. I'd love to know. Comment below, let me know. All right, bad coil out of here. Just in case you were curious of how I take that old coil out, it's really easy. You've got this that goes on the back that you take off. All you have to have is a Phillips screwdriver. Looks like this right here. You got a three screws here. The pan, you can just take it right off. It doesn't have any screws holding it, so that's very nice. Just basically clips on the bottom of that coil. I'm actually gonna take the blower wheel out and clean it, and I'm gonna replace this blower motor. 
I've got a new blower motor right here. If you're curious of how to replace a motor, I've got a video on how to take this mini split system apart from step one to step done. I'll drop that link down in the description to that video so you'll know how to take this unit apart if you need to. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Definitely subscribe and smash that bell before you leave. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. I hope you learned about how if the unit doesn't have enough refrigerant, you're not going to have a good temperature split. If you need the tools to check the temperature split, if you need gauges, go check out the links to those tools down there. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you to all my members. Don't forget to check out all the members only videos like how to size duck work and how to size equipment, equipment pricing, sales training, geothermal training. Those are all there for you. Remember, you have to be level three to see those videos. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you like.